Evening everybody, Sir Vault here, uh, back for another Transformers review, and I'm in a very transformery mood. I don't know why, I've been watching the cartoon in between playing Dawn of War, and I thought I'll do a second video. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to be doing a Generation 1 Seeker, Ramjet! Ramjet is, uh, obviously I said, a Generation 1 Seeker, uh, and he's the second generation of Seekers, along with uh, Dirge and Thrust. Now, the original Ramjet is... He's impulsive, uh, but he's also quite brave, and he has a fondness for, for crashing into things, both objects and enemies. Uh, unfortunately, because of his impulsiveness, and because there's, there's something not quite right up in Bram Jep's head, uh, he tends to crash into things he's not supposed to. So it, it makes him a lot more enemies than he actually should have. Of course, all these crashes... Uh, which seems to be rad, uh, as I said in the other videos, all the Seekers had individual special abilities. That was pretty much Ramjets. Uh, he could ram things. But they do eventually take a toll on him, and they do cause him quite severe damage in places. Ramjet first shows up in Dynavar Island Part 1. And he's a modified F-15. Now, it's never made clear where Ramjet comes from, but seeing as the Decepticons at this point have access to a space bridge, you're supposed to assume he came from there. Now, Ramjet, um, he's one of those Decepticons, and it's true in the comics as well, sorry, he's one of those Transformers, that is well known, but never really gets to do a lot. He's seen quite frequently throughout Series 2. Uh, he has two really notable episodes. Uh, one of which is The Girl Who Loved Power Glide, which focuses mainly on the three Generation 2 New Seekers anyway. And the other one would be a raider in uh, Decepticon Raider in King Arthur's Court, which was where the, where the Transformers episodes started, getting, started to get rather stupid. In the comics... Ramjet has pretty much the same problems in that he never really shows up to do anything in particular. He's there quite a lot of the time, but he doesn't really do a lot. Uh, and he comes back and forth through the comics and is eventually killed, or supposedly killed, by the Swarm. Uh, which is after Starscream has taken control of the underbase. I haven't got a proper explanation of the underbase because I've yet to read the full comics. This is what I've picked up on forums. <coughs> Ramjet appears in the movie uh, a fair bit, and it actually looks like he dies. And it's the same thing that Thrust and Ramjet. Uh, Thrust and Dirge have as well, is they appear to fly straight into Unicron's mouth, and Unicron goes, hum, and you see them blow up. But then he's back again on Char. Okay. Um, and then he makes small appearances throughout the rest of Series 3. I think his last appearance... I can't actually remember when his last appearance was. But he does make one last appearance in Series 3, and that's it. You never see him again. Okay, now, onto the toy. It is, of course, the same Diaclone range as uh, Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp were. But they modelled him slightly different, and they gave him the exact same body, which is just, just that bit. That's the body that all the Seekers have in common. Uh, and Ramjet, along with the other two, are get dubbed Coneheads, uh, mainly because of their design for the animated series. And I think this was to actually give them some differentiation with other than, ju than just being more generic Seekers. But because of the fact that these toys were marketed under uh, were marketed using the same moulds as Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp, they don't actually have proper cone heads because even on their box art um, they're not depicted as being proper cone heads they're actually still properly depicted as just basically being a white star screen 
with different guns and different wings. So they're really supposed to be displayed like that with the cone pointed backwards. But in actual fact, to make them their proper G1 counterpart, they're supposed to look like that. Which does look kind of dumb. It does look kind of dumb. But what can you do? Okay. The wings, of course, were the main difference with them. Assuming, of course, I'm actually doing this properly. I think I am, yes. The wings, of course, were the main difference with them. As in, they've got this curled fin down here and the big boosters on the side that the other F-15s don't have. Uh, the modified F-15s were built by the Blackrock Company and they're built under slave labour under Shockwave's rule. And that's about the only explanation you ever get. It just appears that they they, they get their uh, they get their bodies for it. They get sorry, they get their bodies through what appears to be the Blackrock Company, but it's never actually fully confirmed. Now unfortunately, the guy I bought this ramjet off, the silly bugger went and stuck the tail fins into the engines. So I've actually got to display mine by twisting the wings round. Again, nice toy. Not an awful lot I can say more about it than I haven't said in the Star Scream and Skywalk videos. The only thing I don't like about this is these massive, huge cluster bomb arm cannons. I mean, they look stupid. They just look ridiculous, I mean. But because, of course, it's just simply another really different one of the Diaclone moulds, uh, I suppose there's not really an awful lot they could do with them. Okay, But again... A nice toy, aside from those giant bloody arm things. Okay, now Ramjet gets a classic version of himself. Much, much nicer. Much, much nicer. Uh, again, seems to be using the same stylized idea as for the Skywarp and Starscream of the classics. But this time he actually has the distinctive cone head. Okay, I'll just transform this guy now. Of course, the Classics range was designed, obviously, to, to more emulate their G1 counterparts. So they look more like the proper cartoon. Hence why they all fall down properly. And Ramjet uh, got what the G1 Ramjet didn't get, which was an actual proper cone head. So with the other Seekers... What am I doing? Because with, with the other two Seekers, as in uh, Skywarp and... Star screen. There we go. So I was doing it wrong so the arms wouldn't sit in properly. Alright, we'll try it again now. There we go. That'll do just for now. And turn the head if I can. And these arm cannons. Which are actually in the correct place as well. As in they're up on their shoulders. Not just attached to their elbows. Which is what the G1 toys do pull out his hands here. There we go. And there you have Classics Ramjet. Now I do like the Classics. I've actually got all of them now. Uh, the Grimlock's a pile of wank, but I might do a separate review on him at some point. Right, there's Classics Ramjet. Just hurriedly transformed. And a very nice toy. And a good, you know, it's a good... And unlike the Star Screen, which has... A, the classic Star Screen, which actually has quite a bad paint job. This one's is much better. It's much more improved. Uh, Classics Ramjet is part of the second generation. The second, the second Classics range. Okay, that's Ramjet done for now. Uh, I can't really think of an awful lot to say on any more on either of them. Uh, eBay for the G1 Ramjet you're probably talking a fair bit now, especially now that the movie's out to get your hands on the old toys, I mean I got him for about 20 quid but I've had him a good 6 months at least, so God knows what he's going to be like now Classics Ramjet do a bit of shopping around, you should be able to pick him up quite cheaply for about a tenner or so ok, uh, anyway this is Silver Bolt, uh, with Ramjet and Ramjet Signing off, saying au revoir, adios, I'll get his end.